Well, I'm out in the off-grid workshop this morning. It was about 25 degrees Fahrenheit last night, so pretty darn cold. I've got the Viver or Viver uh, diesel heater cranked up, putting out a pretty good amount of heat. I've had it on for about 45 minutes now. And in this video, I'm going to get this hardwired into my off-grid solar power setup that I've actually just been uh, recently improving and working on. So right now I just have a temporary, I've got the power cord here, temporarily wired into this uh, 280 amp hour SunFun Kits lithium battery. And this is not connected up to solar at the moment just because I'm working on the new system. Started up at about seven and a half amps when I first fired up the heater, and then it dropped down to about two and a half amps. I've got the uh, heat setting on three, which is mid range or medium heat. But I'm just about ready to shut it off and unplug it because I'm going to get it wired into this new system I got put together here. And this is what I'm working with. I don't want to show you this entire setup because that's going to be on my uh, up and coming video where I'm introducing a new product by Renogy Solar. But for the moment I've, I've built this board to mount up here up into the rafters just hanging on that 2x4 board up there with a plywood board that I did some cutouts on and mounted some things. There's a little glimpse of the Renogy system that's up and coming. But I got a uh, six place fuse block or fuse holder. Got eight gauge wires feeding that from the main battery. And then I only have one circuit on right now which is the light switch. I ran all the hots to these switches but this switch right here is connected to that wire. So I only have one circuit wired up at the moment, and that's my light switch. And then I'm going to pick another one of those switches and connect it to the heater, to the uh, Viver diesel heater. And that way in the off-season months or the summertime, which we're coming on here soon, I can shut the uh, shut the heater circuit off and it won't be powering this little uh, digital display full time. It'll just be completely disconnected and shut off when I'm not using it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's just the way I decided to do it. So throughout the summer months or the warmer months, this is really going to have no impact whatsoever on the solar. So this is a set of light switches and then this is going to also be light switches. I think I'm put a I'm going to double the lights in here. I have four of those uh, 12 volt LED bulbs. I did a video showing how I made that light string and I'm going to modify it slightly and then make an, another complete light string of four. So I'll be running eight lights and each one of these will be running about just under four amps each. And I'll put the heater over here on this one. Then I'll have three open circuits off of that uh, six position board that can add three more things. And I'm not sure what I'm going to put. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to put on that yet. But And once I get the wires connected in the back, these will be all screwed up to the board there like I intended it. And it'll be a pretty tight, neat looking setup. So I gotta extend the wires on that heater. The heater comes with a little uh, fuse holder on it. I think it's got a 10 amp fuse. Oh, it's a 20, 20 amp. I should have known by the color. So I'll just take that fuse out of here and put it in that uh, circuit or that fuse holder up there on the uh, wall. But I'm gonna cut these wires off and then that, that cord is not long enough to reach from the heater over to this wall over here where I've got the uh, solar set up. 
I'm going to run it right along that seam of the wall over and then up and just tuck it up tied up against the wall maybe I'll put a couple little clips in there just to keep it in place I don't have any baseboard up and I don't intend on putting baseboard up but I think tucked right off into that corner will be out of the way and work pretty well so what I need to do is shut this down cut that uh, let me shut it down now I guess cut that wire and then measure and find out how long of an extension I need to add to it so I'll go through it takes three or four minutes for that to cool down and shut down and so far it's been working excellent I'm about almost 50 degrees here in the shop there's 24 out outside last night I think it's probably close to uh, just above freezing 32 Fahrenheit or so outside at the moment it's nice clear cold sunny day so let me get the uh, this cut get the measurements and we'll come back and I'll show you how I'm uh, hardwiring that into the uh, existing off-grid solar power setup. So I've got myself spliced together here. I had to put on about 11 foot piece. So that's quite a distance. But I picked up this. This is... 12 gauge wire and I think what I'm soldered it to coming off of the heater is 14 so this should work out okay but this is this is um, copper coated aluminum I'm not I'm not real thrilled about it but it's it's affordable it was about a buck a foot if I went with solid real solid copper I probably could have just got 14 and been fine with it but Anyway, this is what I'm using, and then on the other end, I just have two small ring terminals that are soldered on because both the, uh, the fuse panel and the switch have a little small Phillips head screw in order to attach this. So let me weasel this wire up there and we'll get it all set, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, I've got the heater fired up. Switch seems to be working. And I'm just gonna test it out here for a little bit. Check wires, make sure everything's good. And in the meantime, I'm gonna use three of these little cable ties and I'm just gonna uh, put them in right next to the wall. Hopefully I don't hit the wall with the hammer. Just to hold that cable along the wall in three spots. All right, everything seems to be working just like it should. So let me go ahead and we'll shut this down. And uh, for those of you who are interested, because I get asked questions all the time about links for items that I use in the video, I'll list everything that I got off of Amazon. I'll put links for that in the description below this video. For those who are interested in checking that out. At the end of this video, don't forget to click on the next video and see another one of my DIY off-grid workshop projects. And we'll see you on that video.